Hey, storyteller. They say you only get one chance to make a first impression, and once you do, it's really difficult to shake. That's especially true in storytelling. The first scene, the first sentence a reader encounters will determine whether they even stick around long enough to find out if they like the story. Best-selling author and writing instructor Jerry B. Jenkins puts it this way, Grab the reader by the throat and never let go. So how can you write a throat-grabbing opening line for your story? Welcome to this week's Writer Coaching Session, where we'll discuss several fantastic story openers and tips and techniques you can use to create the best reader first impression for your story. I'm Bridget from B Squared Writer Coaching, an author, editor, and your story coach, here to help you make your story powerful, polished, and publishable. One popular way to start a story is with dialogue, dropping the reader right into the middle of a conversation. But if that dialogue isn't structured correctly or the speaker isn't identified in a way that pulls the reader into his or her head, your opening line could end up confusing or boring readers. That's why I want to give you my ultimate guide to dialogue punctuation. This free PDF simplifies all the rules for punctuating and formatting dialogue, character thoughts, interrupted and trailing speech, stammering, etc. with examples. To download your copy, just click the link in the description or visit www.b2writercoaching.com slash dialogue. That's www.the letter B, the number two, writercoaching.com slash dialogue. And be sure to stick around to the end of this video so you won't miss this week's Power Up, a super practical action step you can use right now in the story you're working on. Have you ever read a book or short story that grabbed you with the very first line and pulled you right into the story? What made that opening line compelling? Why couldn't you stop reading? In this video, we'll examine several fantastic classic opening lines and discuss why they work so well. I'll reference most of them multiple times since they each demonstrate more than one of the tools and techniques I'm going to share with you. Here's a quick overview of the lines we're going to look at. It was a bright, cold day in April, and the clocks were striking 13. From 1984 by George Orwell. There was a boy called Eustace Clarence Scrub, and he almost deserved it. The Voyage of the Dawn Treader by C.S. Lewis. This is my favorite book of all time, though I've never read it. From The Princess Bride by William Goldman. In a hole in the ground there lived a hobbit. From The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. From Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of Number 4 Privet Drive were proud to say that they were perfectly normal, thank you very much. From Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone or Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, depending on which country's publication you are reading, by J.K. Rowling. Far out in the uncharted backwaters of the unfashionable end of the western spiral arm of the galaxy lies a small, unregarded yellow sun. From The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. The past is a foreign country. They do things differently there. From The Go-Between by L.P. Hartley. When crafting your story's opening line, I suggest including one or more of what I call the three C's of a compelling opener. Character, conflict, and current environment, which includes setting and tone. And your first sentence should make sense on its own, before the reader even gets to the next line, let alone the next paragraph. We'll explore each of the three C's in depth, but the point is to give the reader at least a hint of who the viewpoint character is, what's happening, and where the scene is taking place. Now, this doesn't mean you need to give the character's name or describe the entire setting. The point is to anchor the reader in person and place. This can also include anchoring the reader as far as genre and tone are concerned. But we'll explore that a little later. We all know that the protagonist is the heart of your story. So it's important to give the reader a glimpse of who this person is as early as possible. However, your story may not begin with the protagonist's point of view. It could start with another viewpoint character, a significant secondary character, or even the villain's perspective. The key here is to ground the reader in the head of the viewpoint character right away, whoever that character might be. Throughout the scene, you can also use that character's perspective to give the reader a glimpse at the protagonist, either from afar or through that viewpoint character's eyes. To drop hints about your viewpoint character in your story's opening line, 
you can do the following. Provide a glimpse into his or her personality through humor, sarcasm, bluntness, etc. The point here is to set the tone for the story through the character's voice. Reveal something unique or interesting about him or her. This can create empathy or curiosity in the reader. Write the lines in the character's voice. I mentioned this a little bit ago, but this is the actual wording that you're going to use in narration or descriptions in the first line. This can set the tone and create a sense of immediacy, as well as helping the reader identify with the character. For instance, if your viewpoint character has a sense of humor that's similar to that of the reader, this will create an immediate connection. For tips on creating a unique character voice for your viewpoint character and anyone else in your story, check out this video linked above. I'll also link it in the description. You can also reveal more about your viewpoint character by establishing relationships. To do this, you can mention other characters and hint at their connection or opposition to the viewpoint character. An example of this is in our line from The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. I believe the viewpoint character in this was Lucy Pevensey. She starts the story by describing another character, Eustace, and we can see the narrator's or viewpoint character's opinion of him by the way the first line is written, that he almost deserved his awful name. It also reveals our viewpoint character to be a little snarky, so this fits for the first point about revealing the viewpoint character's personality as well. Show how he or she is behaving in responding to or observing the current situation. So whatever's going on in the story, showing how the character is acting or reacting or just their thoughts about the situation can reveal a lot about that character. You can also show one of his or her physical attributes through action. Now, we don't want to just put a description like talking about your character's hair color, but if that character is running in the middle of a storm and the wind is blowing her curly hair in front of her eyes, obscuring her view, we get a tiny picture of her physical appearance, but we're using action to do it. And then you can identify his or her gender, if you want, with the use of pronouns. Your opening line can also drop hints about other people besides your viewpoint character. If the viewpoint character isn't the protagonist, the opening line may give a glimpse into how the viewpoint character views the protagonist, their relationship or connection, or any antagonism between them. It can also introduce a different major character who is not the viewpoint character and show what makes him or her interesting. Again, I'll reference our line from The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. This line hints at Eustace's personality as well as that of the viewpoint character and reveals the tone of the story to be humorous and a bit snarky, as I said earlier. And it points to the relationship between these two characters, at least at the beginning of the story. By pointing to that relationship early on, it gives the reader a hint that this relationship will be pivotal to the story and may be part of the character's arc or subject to change as the story progresses. This can really raise reader anticipation. Perhaps the most important key to grabbing and holding a reader's attention is conflict. After all, without conflict, there is no story. So, the opening line should promise the struggles to come, hint at a conflict that has already happened, or throw the reader right into the middle of the current conflict. This can be an outright ongoing conflict, or it can be just a hint. For example, the opening line from Pride and Prejudice hints at marriage being a number one priority for several characters in the book. The question of marriage and whether a character will marry and whom is the source of conflict throughout the novel. One of the most common reasons agents and editors give for rejecting a novel is that the story starts in the wrong place, usually too soon. This is because starting a story too soon results in a lack of conflict or stakes in the opening line and paragraphs. Readers want to know right away what's at stake and why they should be rooting for these characters in the first place. But how can you make sure you're starting your story in the best possible place? One way is to find the first exciting scene that has lots of action and plunk the reader into the middle of it. To do this, you may need to remove the first few pages of your original beginning. But not all stories are filled with action. In that case, begin with something at stake for the character emotionally. Hint at a difficult or antagonistic relationship or show the clash of two opposing states within the character's life. For example, her own clashing views, desire versus reality, etc. If we look back at our example from Pride and Prejudice, the story doesn't open with an action scene, but it shows the family discussing the arrival of Mr. Bingley into the neighborhood. He's the wealthy young man referenced in the opening line. His arrival and the family's interactions with him and his companions will be the catalyst for everything that happens in the story. 
And let's look at the last of the three C's for a compelling opening line, your story's current environment. Your opening line should give readers a sense of the setting and atmosphere of your story. This includes identifying the genre. To do this, use descriptive language to create a vivid picture in the reader's mind. For example, in The Hobbit, the opening line is a bit matter-of-fact, but the rest of that first paragraph gives us lots of sensory detail, or tells us what sensory detail we won't find in the hole where the hobbit lives. In a hole in the ground, there lived a hobbit. Not a nasty, dirty, wet hole, filled with the ends of worms and an oozy smell. Nor yet a dry, bare, sandy hole with nothing in it to sit down on or to eat. It was a hobbit hole, and that means comfort. You can also create a sense of atmosphere. A well-placed setting detail can create a sense of mystery or anticipation in the reader. Use sensory detail. The use of specific nouns and verbs can engage the reader's senses and create a richly textured scene. For tips on writing effective and vivid sensory detail, check out this video linked above. I'll also link it in the description. Another way to hint at the story's current environment is to show something unique or intriguing about the story world. In our example from The Hobbit, we show the reader that the Hobbit lives in a hole in the ground. That's rather unique. I don't know about you, but I haven't met many people who live in a hole. You can use the wording of your opening line to set the tone for your story. Is it humorous, ironic, romantic, suspenseful? Is it going to be light entertainment or something profound? The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy gives us an example of tone right away. It's a bit snarky and irreverent and a little sarcastic, also a little intellectual. And use your opening line to set reader expectations for the story. Will it be moving, adventurous, terrifying? If you open with a frightening scene, the reader's going to expect a horror or a thriller story. But if in the next scene you switch into a sweet romance, that'll be really confusing. You can also use your opening line to turn a scene set up on its head by ending the sentence with a contradiction. Well, those were the three C's for creating a compelling opening line, but they aren't the only tips and techniques we'll discuss today. Before we get to those, if you're finding this helpful, Click the like button so YouTube will show this video to more writers like you. There are several things we need to consider when crafting an opening line. The first line of your story should be able to stand alone. It won't be a throat-grabbing hook if it doesn't make sense until a person reads the next few sentences. Imagine putting your first line by itself on social media, like let's say you tweet it. Would it make sense? Would it grab a reader's attention? Would it make someone click the link that's next to it? Let's look at The Hobbit. In a hole in the ground, there lived a hobbit. Now, if you weren't familiar with that story at all, wouldn't it make you curious? Why did this person or thing live in a hole? And what is a hobbit, anyway? Besides focusing on one or more of the three C's, a powerful opening line may do one or more of the following. Make a promise that the reader will need fulfilled, or hint at a relationship, event, or outcome that will occur later to raise reader anticipation. For example, Pride and Prejudice hints that marriage will be a crucial part of this story. So the reader's going to want to know who's going to get married and when and why that's going to be important to the story. From Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, we see that the Dursleys consider themselves normal, and it's written in kind of a snarky way to indicate that anyone who doesn't want to be normal is not acceptable. This makes a promise that several not normal things are yet to come. Also, with what the reader will see on the cover and in the book description, the reader knows that this is not a book about ordinary people. It's about a boy who finds out he's a wizard. So the opening line creates a really powerful contrast to that. Your opening line can also raise a question that will be answered later in the story. This can create a sense of intrigue and anticipation. As we mentioned earlier, the opening line from The Hobbit makes a reader want to know what a hobbit is and why it lives in a hole. From The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, why did Eustace almost deserve his name? From 1984, how did clocks strike 13? And from The Princess Bride, how does the narrator or viewpoint character know this is the best book ever written if he's never read it? Your opening line can also make a shocking statement. This can create a sense of urgency or intrigue. For example, in the opening line of 1984, we start with a pretty ordinary sounding day, but the clocks were striking 13. That's a shocking statement. Your opening line can present an interesting or little-known fact or truth, or at least a truth in the eyes of the viewpoint character. This can spark curiosity and make the reader want to know more. For example, in Pride and Prejudice, the narrator states that it is a truth universally accepted 
that a wealthy young man must want a wife. The viewpoint character assumes that because this is a truth to that character, it's a truth to everyone. In Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, it's written as if we're reading a textbook that talks about this faraway backwater end of the galaxy where this unremarkable yellow sun exists. It's written as if it's a fact, but it actually is conveying the opinion of the narrator regarding this yellow sun. The language and style of your opening line are also vital to its success in hooking the reader and in setting expectation for the rest of the story. Effective opening lines may be simple but profound. For example, from the go-between, the past is a foreign country. They do things differently there. That's pretty simple but quite profound. Makes you think. You can use powerful language that is appropriate to the genre, setting, era, and character voice. We can see this in Pride and Prejudice. The style of language harkens back to the 1800s when this book was written. It is obvious to the modern reader that this isn't going to be set in contemporary times. These days, we wouldn't say that he must be in want of a wife. We'd say he's looking for a wife. Your opening line can use metaphors and imagery that fit the viewpoint character's personality or convey mood and tone. A strong image can set the story's tone and immediately captivate the reader's attention. In the go-between, we have a thought-provoking tone uh, that does create some imagery. It, the metaphor compares the past to a foreign country, and the second sentence enhances that metaphor by saying people do things differently there. It also creates a little humor. Finally, you can add an incongruous word to an ordinary situation to shift the meaning. For example, the number 13 in the opening line to 1984 is something we don't expect and creates that sense of mystery. We do need to keep several cautions in mind when crafting our story's opening line. There are things we should avoid, after all. The first scene's a bit obvious, but don't start with anything boring or mundane, unless you put a unique or weird spin on it. For example, that line from 1984, who cares that it was a bright sunny day in April? That's very ordinary. But the addition of the clock striking 13 at the end, well, that changes things completely. Related to that, don't start with a long description or a bit of backstory. Put your readers right into the current action or whatever is going on in the story and trust that the hints you will drop later about the character's backstory will be enough to keep the reader going. Readers don't need to know everything about your characters or your world up front. That really just takes away all the mystery and anticipation. For more tips on how to avoid backstory and information dumps and to do your description right, check out this video linked above. I'll also link it in the description. Raise questions, but don't confuse the reader by failing to give enough information. Our line about the Hobbit raises a question of what the Hobbit is and why it lives in a hole, but we know it's some kind of creature that is sentient and human-like in some way, especially after we read the rest of the first paragraph. Some writing craft books suggest that it's unwise to begin a story or book with dialogue because readers don't yet know the characters and aren't invested in them. If you do begin with dialogue, be sure to identify both characters, clarify which is the viewpoint character, and make the context of their conversation clear. This dialogue should also be powerful enough to make readers want more. For tips on crafting natural-sounding dialogue, check out this video linked above, and I'll also link it in the description. Speaking of dialogue, if you haven't done so yet, be sure to download your ultimate guide to dialogue punctuation. Remember, just click the link in the description or visit www.b2writercoaching.com dialogue. For this week's Power Up, take some time to brainstorm and experiment with different opening lines until you find one that reflects the story's genre and tone while drawing the reader into the conflict and or hinting at something unique and interesting about your viewpoint character. You can also study the opening lines of books that you love and determine which of the tips and techniques we've looked at today that the author used and how that was able to pull you into the story. If you're just getting started in writing your story, I recommend just writing the first thing that comes to you for your opening line. Don't agonize over this yet because you may change your opening line several times while you're writing the story. I recommend not settling on anything or, or getting too attached to your first sentence until after the story is written and you're in the revision process. Even experienced writers will often need to revise the opening line after the story is completed because only then can you know everything that will happen and what the character's full journey will entail. To make compelling promises of what is to come, you must first know what your story will actually deliver.
Best-selling author Brandon Sanderson talks about the promises, progress, and payoffs in our stories. The opening should make a promise to the reader. The rest of the story should show the character making progress toward the fulfillment of that promise, and then the climax ends the story with a payoff or how that promise might play out. So we want to make sure we're making the most appropriate promises in our opening lines. Remember, your opening line is your chance to make a great first impression on your reader, so take the time to make it count. But what about the rest of your opening scene? After all, it's just as important as that first sentence in making a good first impression. For tips on how to write a compelling opening scene and 11 other scene types, check out this video and let's power up your storytelling.